Hey y'all, it's your girl Queen T, also known as the Real Tarjay. Thank you for checking in to my YouTube channel. It is a pleasure to be here with y'all today. Today is not only a beautiful day, but it's also a blessed day that a queen was born. Yes, I'm talking about me, Queen T. Uh, today is my birthday. Today is my 31st birthday, 31, and I'm saying W-O-N because I've already won. Um, you know, when you're a follower of Christ, you've already won the battle. So, that's just how I'm accepting this year. Um, but I came before y'all. Y'all heard some music in the back background. I love my Thai A uh, little about me, you if you don't know, I didn't really grow up in the church, so I really didn't know a lot of like Christian songs and stuff like that. But what I can say is when I heard of Thai Tribute, I was like, oh, this music, this music, yeah, it, it definitely gets me through. So he's one of like the first artists that I really started um, downloading his music and stuff like that. Because I would hear gospel music, but I didn't have any of it on my phone or anything like that sorry y'all my hair is i hope y'all like my hair this is a, this is a little extreme for me so y'all if you know i'm usually like a blonde person oh my god this is really bad okay i'm usually like a blonde person but i'm usually like honey blonde uh so this platinum blonde i decided to do it for my birthday because like i said i've already won so i don't care about anybody's opinion okay but that's not why i'm here to talk about my birthday i'm not here to talk about how i've already won um, I'm here for a word for you and whenever I bring a word I make sure that the word isn't only for you it's also for me uh, in my last video I talked about why am I talking I don't like to just talk just to talk y'all I just I try to be led and try to make sure that I really have something to say versus me just showing up just to show up because I feel like sometimes people just show up just to show up and they just start giving you anything and it don't really have no meat and gravy to it. That's what we're going to say, meat and gravy this year. If it don't got meat and gravy, keep it. All right, so I was listening to, so let me pat myself on the back. I went to the gym this morning, and usually what I do is I listen to music while I'm on the treadmill. And instead of listening to music, there was a video of Sarah Jakes Roberts that I started yesterday called Acceptance. I think she uploaded it like uh, the first week of February or something. And um, I started it yesterday, but I really, I was kind of like busy. It was a lot going on. I wasn't really paying attention to it. So I actually stumbled across it while I was on the treadmill, while I was like clearing out all my background pages on my iPhone. And I was like, oh yeah, I never finished this video. So instead of listening to music, I decided to uh, let Sarah's message play while I was on the treadmill. And the message was called Acceptance. If you have not seen it, um, I encourage you to go see it. I will put it in the link below this video. Y'all, it got me all the way right. But not only that, it was when I finished, oh God, it's a lot to it. When I finished that video, her message that she preached on Sunday, she went down to the Potter's house down in Texas, her home church of her father, T.D. Jakes, and she preached a message called The End of an Era. It was like those two messages together. I don't know what it did to me. Um, it led me into a moment of, worship and praise um usually i'll hear a message and i'll be like yeah yeah but no like that really I, I had to i had to get down and give god the glory like i had to sit down and really digest what was being said and what she was tying into and i have to start with acceptance so the thing about acceptance and i'm not going to reiterate her message i tried to pour it into myself about the things that I've been going through, the things that have been bothering me. Um, I'm, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'm just like the rest of y'all. I struggle with what is my purpose on this earth as well. I do. Sometimes it's temporary things that I know I'm called to do. Like when I did my book, Three Rings and a Promise. When I did my uh, women's event, uh, Beautiful Queen Expo. It's stuff like that, but it always feels like, mm, I feel like there's something else I'm supposed to do and I'm, I'm getting there, but I can't quite find it. So what Sarah was talking about in acceptance was like accepting your truth. And it's so true because I feel like a lot of times there are things in our life that we try to hide, that we are ashamed about, that uh, something we feel guilty about. And when I say hide, maybe it's something that you don't think about every day, but it's something, there was one day in particular, you got yourself, I won't say you got yourself, let me take that back, whoa, 
there was one day in particular that a situation occurred or something happened that just really uh, matched your mind up and you felt like man like I don't know if people will ever accept this about me I don't know if people will ever uh, accept me as a person I don't even know if I can accept myself um, I don't even know if I'd be qualified for what it is that God is calling me to because of this derailment that came into my life and I, I started thinking like man like I'm always talking about like these three rings and stuff like that like these uh, these engagements that I got myself into and man like how I feel like oh it's kind of like this I always try to say that that's my story you know I always say that's my story but if I'm really honest y'all there are some things even before my first engagement there were some issues there okay I talk a little bit about it in three rings and a promise but I don't really dive deep into it there was a, a a bigger problem right i talked about in three rings in the promise about um sex like sex just being something that just was it, it just disrupted my spirit because i felt like i was having sex to get love from people i i, I talk about this in the book yes three rings in the promise Yes, I'm Queen C. Yes, um, I co-founded the ministry, My Sister Circle of Christ. And I do talk about sex, okay? I like wearing blonde hair and I like looking cute, okay? I'm still a follower of Christ. But I talked about how sex and sexual perversion, sexual addiction, and uh, how that stuff just used to disrupt my spirit. But instead of focusing on that, I focus so much on the engagements and I'm... Man, when I think about my truth, I think my truth is so much bigger than the engagement. Y'all get what I'm saying? I'm not I'm not gonna die deep because this is something that just um it, it just happened. Like I just I've I've been thinking about this for a while, but the message of Sarah, what she said today, is causing me to dive in a little deeper. So I'm still on this journey of discovering it, so I can't really connect it all for y'all but I want you to think about what your truth is like something that used to identify you and you think that it's been put to rest because you don't think about it anymore but every day or like serious situations you're getting into maybe like a new job um you know getting a new boss maybe like uh having to work with somebody in a group and at school maybe in a relationship maybe how you relate to your children maybe how you relate to your mom your dad it, life is all about relationships it's not just about romantic relationships everything we do there's a relationship tied to it you can't if you're about this mindset that it's just me i'm gonna do me you're not gonna get far you're going to have to connect with some people you're going to have to network uh even with people you don't like to get to wherever it is that god is trying to take you but until you identify your truth, something about you that you just really don't like, <laughs> something about you that you feel like is like an ailment, is like something that if if it was on your shirt, you don't think people would be welcome, would welcome you into their presence. Like if you walked around with like the words, literally, like how I have London and New York on my shirt. If you walked around with your ugliness on your shirt, your truth, how do you think people would uh, react to you? If you automatically feel like, I don't know if they'd be feeling me, T, uh, I feel like uh, a lot of people wouldn't even want to be my friend. I feel like if people really knew like my dark, deep, deep secrets, I'd probably have to stay in a corner, stay in a house, would be afraid to leave out. That's your truth, okay? I want you to accept that truth and what this is called is getting to your next. I don't know why, but for some reason, y'all, I really feel like your next, my next, anybody who's looking for their next is tied to that truth. Okay? You're stuck where you are. I'm stuck where I am. I don't like just saying you. Like I said, why am I talking? I'm talking because it convicted me. Um, I'm not saying it to convict you. I'm saying it to push you and encourage you into finding your neck so you can get out of the stuck phase, okay? So I'm not condemning you. Condemning you is 
causing you to worry and to fear and to be afraid. That's not what I'm doing. I'm encouraging you. I'm pushing you. I'm giving you a sisterly push. There is something, king or queen, whoever you are watching this video, from your past that you laid at the door of this new realm territory that you're in and you're going through the motions of life each and every day thinking oh you're fine but then deep down you're really not fine you feel like there's something else but you can't get to that next and you don't know what it is that it's going to take for you to get to that next i believe by the power of god y'all <laughs> even know what is coming from God out me by the power of God I believe that that ugly thing that you don't like you got to go back and get it you got to go back and get it you got to go back and face it you got to wrestle with that thing and you got to accept it you got to accept it I'm not telling you to walk up to everybody on earth and and tell them like this is my ugliness I'm not telling you to get a t-shirt and, and exposing it to people that's not what I'm telling you I'm telling you to go get that thing bring that thing to the altar Okay, bring that thing. I'm not literally talking about a church building. I'm talking about wherever your prayer closet is. I don't know if it's your shower. I don't know if it's your living room. Literally a, a, a closet, a utility closet, your kitchen floor, your car. Take that thing to the altar, okay? Lay it before your father and tell him, I don't know what this is, but I know that this is something that I was not able to get over. And what I did was I buried it into my subconscious, unconscious thoughts. And God, I really need you to help me break through this. I believe by faith that God is going to help you get over that. Amen. I believe he's going to help you get over it. I believe he's going to help me get over it. And once we accept that, something about that is tied to our purpose. <laughs> something about that is tied to our purpose. Because the thing about purpose is it's unapologetic. It's unshameful. You, you can't shame my purpose. My purpose is who I am. When, when you finally own who you are and, and you, you can walk around and when people throw it in your face, you can look at them like, and is that the best you got? Like, yeah, I know that. And I'm not afraid to tell people that. Is that the best you got? But when you're afraid of that thing, when, when you want to ignore it and you want to bury it and keep it in your subconscious and unconscious thoughts, um, it, 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 it's, it's going to... It's going to derail you. It's going to keep you stuck. There is something from your past. I don't know what it is. I don't know who you are, king or queen, who I'm talking to right now. There is something from your past that you are ashamed about. You know exactly what it is because it's the first thing that probably came to your mind as you're watching this video. There's something about your past that you left at the door of this new territory that you're in wherever you've gotten settled and wherever you've gotten comfortable um god don't okay first of all let me tell you this being a follower of christ something that my mentor taught me there's nothing comfortable about being a follower of christ yes god gives us peace but we are fighting a battle against spirits and principalities not against the flesh not against oh i just want to make you feel good no things are going to disturb you disrupt your spirit and it's meant to because it's meant to help you grow and it's meant to help you not get stuck. It's meant to push you, okay? It's meant to push you into your next. There's always a next, okay? Um, I don't know what your next is, but I need you to take a few steps back a little bit. Go get to that door and get, I'm sorry, y'all, my nose rang. Go back to that door and get what it is that you left that you felt like, I'm going to just bury it here and nobody ever know about it. Go get it. Take it to your Father in Heaven. Take it to the Lord. Ask Him what to do about it. God, I'm stuck. This all I got, okay? This, this is the one thing that's keeping me stuck. And it, it, it's something I really can't stand. You can even say, God, I don't even understand why I was dealt this hand, you know? But God, help me so that this can no longer control me, derail me, uh, frighten me, or cause me to feel shame and pain that I feel when I see it, God, when I, when I speak it, when I think about it. Take it to your Father. And I like giving biblical context, so I do have a word. And it wasn't even nothing I had to search for, y'all. This is how I know um, 
this is this is the spirit moving because I was like, man, like I need a word. Something instantly came to my mind and I was like, that's it. That's it right there. Okay, so I'm gonna take y'all to John 14. And uh it's within here, but I'm gonna read the uh I'm gonna read like uh John 14, 1 through 7. So this way you can at least understand where I'm coming from. So it's called Jesus, the way to the Father, right? Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, what I have told you that I'm going to pre prepare, I had to settle on that, prepare a place for you. When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me and where I am. And you know the way to where I'm going. So Jesus is talking to his disciples, basically telling them that he's about to leave, that he's about to be crucified. They don't understand what's going on. Like, dog, what are you talking about? Um, and uh, Thomas goes, uh, but but Lord, we, we, we don't know where you're going. Like, what, what you talking about? We have no idea where you are going. So how can we know the way? I thought of Thomas as being like us. There was a promise that God gave on our life and we saw it and we started losing a little confidence in it as we got stuck in this place of comfort. Y'all, this nose ring. I'm so sorry. As we got stuck in this place of comfort and all of a sudden we starting to feel like maybe I overthought my own purpose. Maybe I overthought my own calling um, because this ain't working. I, I don't, I don't, Jesus, I thought Jesus called me to this place, but I don't even know how to get there. So I feel like Thomas is being how we are. So this is the verse right here. This is the verse right here. that I'm getting to John 14, 6. Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you would know who my Father is. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. <laughs> Y'all, that's it right there. John 14, 6. Jesus is the way the truth and the life and the only way we can get to god's promises is through him okay the only way people that's connected to you can get to what it is that's going to help break them through some things is through your truth i don't, I don't know what it is I, I don't know what your truth is i'm, I'm still digesting mine i give y'all a little taste of it I, I know it got something to do with i, I just <sighs> I just know that it's so much deeper than these three rings, y'all. And I'm so grateful that God don't give it all to us at once because, man, if he gave this to me a few years ago, first of all, I wasn't even practicing celibacy a few years ago. So I would have been like, ha, ah, whatever. Um, but it has something to do. It's so much bigger than, y'all just pray for me on that. But I believe that your truth is going to help people see who Jesus is. And I believe that you walking in your truth will get you closer to Christ so that Christ can take you to God, the Father, and the promises that he has for you. I don't know what your promises are, but um, I speak into you that your, problem, that your uh, promises have been awakened. They've been refreshing. Your mind has been rejuvenated. Your spirit has been energized. You know, I, I cast out the enemy in any attack that he tries to put on your mind that makes you doubt your calling. Your calling is there Jesus is there. He is the way, the truth, and the light. And I want y'all to know your truth, accept your truth. Shout out to my sister, Sarah Jakes Roberts, for putting that message out there. And uh, make sure y'all go see it. I'm going to put the link below. But yeah, th this this message, I could have just kept it for me, but I felt like this this not only for me. This is this is not only for me. There, I cannot be the only person that feel like, man, like, I feel like there was some, my book is called Three Rings and a Promise, y'all. Come on. I was talking about the promise and, and then sometimes what? Oh my God, it's almost been three years. Almost three years later, I'm like, man, maybe I over the promise. No, that's not true. It, it, there's still a promise. There is still a promise in every step that I take. Nothing that we do, y'all, is surprising God, okay? There is nothing that we're doing right now that is a surprise to God, okay? You can say, dang, I messed up. He already knew you was going to mess up. So just just ask for repentance and, and get back up. Don't stay there. Don't stay in the I messed up. I'm not qualified. I can't get it right. He knew that you was going to have them thoughts. 
He knew that you was going to mess up before you even knew you was going to mess up. He knew that time that you said, God, I ain't going to do it no more. He knew that you, <laughs> he was like, oh, okay, I still love you though, but I know you're going to do it again in two months. He already knew, y'all. He knew who you were when you were in your mother's womb, okay? Jeremiah, yes. Let me stop, y'all. But that's my message to y'all. Um, shout out to Sarah Jakes Roberts. Make sure y'all go watch that video. Hers is a little longer. Y'all know I don't like to be on here too long. It's already been 20 minutes. That's enough. God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, all intertwined and the Holy Spirit is within you. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I always think of them as uh, the Trinity, as a triangle. I think of God at the top. Jesus there and the Holy Spirit there. So if I'm walking with Christ and we both getting closer to God, <laughs> you're going to win. Like I said, this is my year of 31, W-O-N. I've already won. And you may not be 31, but I'm telling you, you've won too. You, you, can't walk this, you can't walk this journey, this life that you're on and life that you're on feeling defeated because you've already won. I don't, I don't care what the circumstance looks like right now. You've already won. Okay, so getting to your next is acknowledging that you've already won. Two is walking in your truth. Go back and get that truth wherever you left it at the door. If you hit it in somebody alley in a dumpster, shoot, I don't know. Maybe you left it in, um, <laughs> maybe you left it in a junkyard or something or you called yourself trying to burn it with some fire you better go get them ashes and bring them with you and take them to your father in heaven and you ask him god what am i supposed to do with this i don't know what to do with this i but it's something about this that's keeping me stuck in this comfortable place yes yeah, comfortable but god comfortable is no longer convenient for me because there's something in me that's wrestling that that knows that there's more knows that there's more come on y'all I said this before, there's two dates on a tombstone, your birth date and your death date. And the most important thing on a tombstone is the dash. Let your dash be memorable, okay? For you, let your legacy be memorable. Like, don't, don't give up, don't give up. So find your truth, walk in your truth, accept your truth, and, and let Jesus lead the way. That's all I got to say, y'all. I love y'all. I'm your girl, Queen T, and I'm going to be on the MSCOC podcast this Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Call in and join us for the live podcast. You can uh, raise your questions. I'm going to be speaking on a, a message that's going to bless your love life. It's called Forgotten Valentine. So if you need some juice to get amped up for Valentine's Day or feel a little loved, make sure you call in. All right. Information is below. That's all I got, y'all. Take care. Love y'all.